let's get to it. In this video, we're going to be talking about the PrimeWeld TIG 225X. We'll be showing how the torch switch is used for 2T and 4T. We'll also hook up the foot pedal. But first, we'll use the torch switch and show how the start current and the upslope can help you coming off an edge. And then also how the downslope and end current can help you when you're going to an edge. So if you've been wondering what 2T and 4T is all about by the end of this video, you should have a pretty good idea or you may just want to stick to your foot pedal. I've never been much for unboxing videos, so I'm going to keep this really short, just basically to show you what comes with this machine. For years, affordable machines came with a crappy torch and a crappy foot pedal. This one comes with a genuine CK air-cooled TIG torch and a nice CK DENS adapter. And the great thing about a DENS adapter is it makes it really easy to replace a torch. Flow meters can sometimes get damaged in transit. They've done a good job in packing this one in high-density foam. Instead of a Frankenstein boot foot pedal, this one's nice and smooth and low profile. Comes with a little starter kit for TIG cups, collet bodies, and collets. Most TIG inverters also stick weld. This one does too. And comes with a stick welding stinger and, of course, the ground clamp. Inert gas hose for hooking up your flow meter to the machine. All you basically need is a cylinder of argon and you're good to go. I like that the plug is heavy duty. It's a standard three prong plug and it's dual voltage. It comes with this pigtail in case you need to run off 115. I'm going to go through real quickly setting this machine up. Starting with hooking up the argon to the back of the machine. This is all pretty straightforward stuff so I'm going to fast forward through it. There are a couple of important parts. I'll slow down during those key key moments. Here's one of them. Open the argon tank valve very slowly at first. Then open it all the way and backseat the valve. Not a bad idea to do a leak check. Sometimes you got to get on a wrench pretty hard to get things seated up. But if you don't, you're going to lose a lot of argon overnight. I don't know why this outlet seems to be upside down, but that's how it was. Now let's go ahead and plug the torch in to the front. We'll hook the argon hose up first. And this is one of those important things. Make sure to plug your torch in on the negative. Follow the owner's manual, but almost every TIG welder I've ever used, probably every one I've ever used, always plug the TIG torch in on the negative side. Now we'll use the foot pedal later in the video. For right now, though, we're going to use the torch switch because that lets us show what the 2T and 4T functions do. I'm going to tape the torch switch onto the torch with some painter's tape or something that's really easy to cut loose just for the sake of this video. The last thing is plugging in the ground clamp and I want to attach it to the workbench in a place that's ground clean. Clean bright metal, no paint, no hot rolled mill scale. I'm going to turn the machine on and we can hear those fans running. They move a lot of air on this machine. A lot of machines move a lot of air. You don't want to weld right next to the machine on your workbench. Okay, I've got the torch switch taped to the torch. We're going to set this up for 2T operation with a torch switch. The first thing that happens when I press that trigger is pre-flow. That's argon starts flowing before it initiates the arc, and that's adjustable up to about three seconds. You only need about 0.2 or 0.5 for steel. You might want one and a half seconds for aluminum. Post-flow is the amount of time the argon continues to flow once you terminate the arc, and that depends on the material type. You only need enough to keep your electrode silver for aluminum, but for stainless steels and, and other alloys, you might want more. But for basic 2T TIG welding, I'm selecting the TIG on the TIG switch. Then I'm going over here, and I'm going to DC for steel. This machine, with the 2T function, the upslope and the downslope don't come into play. It's strictly an on-off switch. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to set it on 2T, and we're going to light up and see what that looks like. 2T stands for two touches. It starts the arc and ends the arc on this machine. So I've got the machine set on 50 amps. So when I press that trigger, I have 50 amps. There are times when that works out just fine on thicker metals for quick tacks and things like that, but sometimes it doesn't work out so good. In this case, when I shut the amps off all at once, it leaves me with a fisheye, a crater, because we didn't have any tapering off of the amperage. So let's take a look at 4T now. 4T is four touches. First, the first touch gives us the pre-flow and the start amps, then it upslopes up to operating amperage, I weld, and then it downslopes, and then the fourth touch is end amps and post-flow starts. 
All right, let's take a look at all these freaking knobs one by one that make up the 4T settings. First thing, I need to set the preflow. For steel, again, very minimal, maybe half a second at most. For the start current setting, I generally set mine pretty low. In this case, I'm just keeping it on the minimal. Uh, if you're using a large electrode and you want a real crisp start, you can set it higher. I'm not aware of any situation where I'd want to start at 225 amps, but it does go up to that. The next thing is upslope. I generally want about maybe two or three seconds upslope just to give me time to situate, you know, my, my eyeglasses in through my cheater lens and things like that. Uh, but I don't need much upslope. You can, you can almost set it to almost nothing and, you, and you're fine with a torch switch. Downslope is another thing. Downslope is going to depend on the thickness of what you're doing, what material type. Um, end current, I like it pretty low. I want to taper down to almost nothing to avoid leaving a crater or fisheye. And then post flow, that depends on the thickness, the amperage you're welding, what material type you're welding. Uh, at the bare minimum, you want it to keep it long enough to keep your electrode silver. All right, let's take a look at all the 4T touches. All right, here's one, and that starts my arc. The amperage will stay at that start current until I let off of the trigger. That would be touch number two. So once I let off the trigger, like this right here, now it starts the upslope, and it starts to ramp up to whatever I have the panel amperage set at. And then when I'm nearing an edge or the end or something, I press again, and that starts the downslope. That starts to taper off the amperage down to the end amps, the end current. And then once I let off, it terminates the arc completely. But I'm at such a low amperage, it doesn't leave a crater hole or a fisheye. Let's take a quick look at a stationary torch and a turntable to really see what 4T does best. So I press down on the trigger and I get my pre-flow and I get my start current and nothing changes until I let off the trigger. That's number two. And then it upslopes until it reaches the operating amperage. And now I'm just operating at max amperage, whatever I have the machine set to. I press the trigger again. That's number three. It kicks into downslope mode and tapers off to whatever I have my end amperage setting. And then the fourth, the fourth touch ends the arc. And it's, you can see how it tapers down like a teardrop or a comet trail at the end of the arc. And then going back to the beginning of the bead, you know, it's the same thing. It starts at a really low amperage and then increases amperage and tapers up into a wider bead. Now, we're going to switch over to aluminum. And we're going to still use the 4T. And then we'll plug in the foot pedal and we'll do some more aluminum. Switching to aluminum just basically involves pressing that button right there, switching over to AC. But there are two other settings that are strictly for aluminum. That's AC frequency and AC balance. So AC frequency, I'm going to set at about 100 hertz. AC balance is the amount of cleaning action I have. Before we get into welding aluminum here, I want everybody to be able to see the arc a lot better. So I'm going to switch over really quickly to a clear cup. And it's going to help us all see a lot better Everything, the cleaning action, the arc, the puddle, it's going to light things up. That's why I like to film with a clear cup. That's the only reason I started using them, but I learned really quick to help me to see it better too. This is 4T. I started the arc. It upsloped. Now I'm at full operating amperage, which is about 110 to 120 right here on this eighth inch thick material. And right here I press again. It tapers off for me, just like a foot pedal would. And I don't blow the end away. And I don't leave a crater hole, crater crack, or anything like that. All right, let's do another one. Let's take a quick look at this. I press the trigger, and I get my start amps. And then I let off, and that starts the upslope right off the edge. Now I'm at operating amperage, which is about 110 to 120 amps on this eighth-inch thick aluminum. I weld along to the end. I don't blow the end away because I was able to taper off with the downslope. I'm going to take this torch switch off now and hook up the foot pedal, which is what I definitely prefer. I just wanted to show you the, the torch switch and how it can be used. And it's, it's very handy to have in your toolbox. I wouldn't throw it away. I just prefer a foot pedal most of the time. All machines are a little different, but when you plug the foot pedal in on this one, it's best to have it on 2T and have the upslope and downslope set on zero. All right, let's weld with a foot pedal now. My preference. Okay, I'm going to press the foot pedal just lightly, get an arc started, and I'm going to just let that cleaning action work for a second or two. And then, once I get a puddle going, I'll ramp up just like the 4T did. 
except I'll do it at my own pace and not be locked into whatever upslope setting I had going on the 4T setting. I get to the end, I taper off manually. Now I've noticed I got quite a lot of cleaning action here, so I'm going to set the AC balance counterclockwise a little bit. On this machine, that's where you get more penetration and less cleaning action. So let's light up again. I like enough cleaning to get a, where I get a really nice, clean, shiny puddle. I don't want any pepper in the puddle. Not interested in that. There are times when I'll adjust my arc with a, with a lot less cleaning if, if the material is brand new and pristine and perfectly clean, but that's rarely the case. I like a nice, clean, wet, shiny puddle. One of the questions I get asked most frequently is what's a good affordable TIG welder where the company stands behind their product and takes good care of their customers. This machine definitely fits the bill and that's why I added it to my store. I wouldn't exactly call it an entry level welder, it's much more than that. This welder would have served me well in my side hustle days getting started. It would have been a really affordable way to get started. I bundled it with some kits because I think that's going to improve your experience with the welder, but you can also order it just as is. If I was buying this welder, I would 100% at the very minimum get the stubby gas lens kit with it. The hardware in the stubby gas lens kit has O-rings, so it'll let you use clear cups as well as ceramic cups. I hope this video was helpful with the 2T and the 4T instructions. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching.